What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. This series is going to be the start of a PvP series where we're going to be doing a basic PvP build for every single class and why I chose these specific runes and talents. So today we're going to be talking about the Paladin. Personally, I think Rhett Paladin is going to be one of the top performers when it comes to open world PvP and Warsong Gulch. They have an absolute metric ton of upfront burst damage, they have sustain, they can keep themselves alive, and they have a stun at this level. So without further ado guys, let's dive in. Okay, so we're here on Wowhead. We're using the talent calculator for Season of Discovery, as you can see right here. We're selected on our Paladin, and we're going to start off by selecting our runes before we put any talent points in. So for our chest rune, we have two different choices here, but in my opinion, one real choice. We're going to most likely be going with Divine Storm, simply because this is just another ability that we can use to deal damage, right? Horn of Lordaeron is more of a buff. It gives you six strength and agility, but six strength and agility, in my opinion, is going to do a lot less damage than having another attack, right? We have Divine Storm. Yes, it's an AoE cleave, but it's going to give you another button to press when you're sitting on top of someone whacking their face in. So in my opinion, we go with Divine Storm here, and that's going to be a lot more damage than gaining six strength or agility. On our hand rune, we're going to obviously be going for Crusader Strike. It's an instant strike that causes 75 weapon damage and regenerates 2% of your mana. So this is going to be one of your main damaging abilities, and it's going to help you to not run out of mana. So we're going to select Crusader Strike for our hand rune. And then on our legs, this is where we're posed with a, a little bit of a choice here. Um, we have Exorcist, we have Inspiration Exemplar, and Rebuke. All three of these would be decent choices in PvP, and also, I'm not going to leave this out, Avenger's Shield, right? What is the Paladin's weakness when it comes to PvP? The Paladin's weakness is that they have no gap closer whatsoever. You can get kited for days. Yes, you have Blessing of Freedom, so you can't be slowed, but let's say you're fighting a Warlock or a Hunter or a Mage that's 30 yards away from you, you can't get to them, you're not getting slowed, but you simply can't get to them, they keep running away. Um, this is going to be something that's very situational, and I was thinking about this too the other day. You could take Avenger's Shield in this slot, right? So what is Avenger's Shield? Hurls a holy shield at an enemy, dealing whatever damage, blah 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 blah, dazing them and jumping to additional nearby enemy targets. We're not really worried about the damage that Avenger's Shield does here, but we're worried about the daze, right? It's a slow, basically. Um, and what you can probably do is keep a one-hander and a shield in your bags and make a macro that throws on that one-hander and shield and casts Avenger's Shield, and then you throw back on your two-hander when you get to them. Um, this is something that I feel like I'm going to need to test out a lot to see, but this could potentially give the Paladins a gap closer, uh, and that would be pretty strong. So do you go with Avenger's Shield? Shield, do you go with Exorcist, right? Exorcism can now be cast on any target and has a 100% increased critical strike chance against undead and demons. This would be massive fighting those metamorphosis warlocks uh, that you know are going to be all over the place. Or do we go with Inspiration Exemplar? Your inspiring presence periodically dispels fear and sleep effects on nearby party members. This would be nice fighting shadow priests and fighting warlocks. Uh, you, you know, you'd be getting feared constantly and having this on would just, you know, periodically be dispelling those fears. This would be nice as well. Or do you go with Rebuke, the standard interrupt, right? Interrupts spell casting and prevents any spell in that school from being cast for two seconds. There's a lot of good choices in the leg rune slot and I'm not 100% sure. It seems like they're very situational, right? Exorcist would be great if you're fighting a warlock uh, that's sitting in metamorphosis form. I mean, it can be used on anyone, and you, you can't swap runes on the fly. You have to be out of combat. So that's where I feel like Avenger's Shield might come into play if that works, and I have a feeling it will. Um, it, you know, if you have the Avenger's Shield rune on and you have a one-hander and a shield in your bag, you're most likely going to be able to make a macro that throws on the one-hander and a shield and casts Avenger Shield. That's going to give you a slow, right? It lasts 10 seconds, okay? That's a pretty big daze, uh, and that's enough time to get on top of your enemy and start whacking their face in, right? So we have Avenger Shield situational. Got to test it out. Not 100% sure on that. Exorcist would be amazing, most likely against those Metamorphosis Warlocks. However, it can be cast on anybody as a damaging ability. Inspiration Exemplar, again, another good one that would be used against Shadow Priests and Warlocks to kind of dispel, uh, dis dispel those fears. And then Rebuke. 
right? Another interrupt. However, I don't really know who's going to be standing still hard casting at you and give you a chance to use this. So I'm not 100% sure on this one. Yes, an interrupt is great. Um, but I'm just trying to think about this in the setting of World PvP or Warsong Gulch. It probably would be more useful in Warsong Gulch than World PvP. In World PvP, people tend to like run and kite um, more than Warsong Gulch. So in my opinion, one of the top choices here, if it works, is going to be Avenger's Shield. If not, I would probably suggest going for Rebuke or Exorcist for that extra damage, especially in large-scale PvP like Warsong Gulch, Exorcist would be great. Not really sure how the Ash and Veil PvP is going to go, but we'll have to see there. So for the purposes of this, we're going to take Avenger's Shield, and I'm going to assume that it works. And if it doesn't, swap this out for Exorcist or Rebuke. And then let's look at our talents, right? So in the Retribution Tree, we have Benediction, which will reduce the, the mana cost of our Judgment and Seal spells by 15% if we put 5 points in there. But we're not going to worry about that because we're going to be using Crusader Strike, which is going to be regenerating 2% of our mana. We're going to instead opt for the 5 points in Improved Blessing of Might for that extra 20% attack power bonus. And then we're going to go down to the next tree. We're going to put 2 points in Improved Judgment to reduce the cooldown of our Judgment spell by 2 seconds. And then 3 points in Improved Seal of the Crusader. Increase the melee attack power bonus of your Seal of the Crusader and the holy damage increase of the Judgment of the Crusader by 15%. This is the most important part, right? So when we run up to someone in World PvP, we're going to Judge Crusader on them so that our Seal of Command and all of our Judgments and our holy damage does a lot more damage. And this is going to be huge. It's a 15% damage increase, right? So moving down to the next tree, obviously, by this time we're level 20, we put one point in Seal of Command or Seal of Casino, as we like to call it. And then here's what we're, you know, we're given a choice, right? We have five points left to work with. So what I'm saying we do here is you can obviously go five points in Conviction to get 5% more crit, or we go three points into Conviction for 3% more crit and two points into Pursuit of Justice. Increased movement and mounted speed of the Paladin by 8%, and it does not stack with other movement speed increasing effects. So having that 3% crit from Conviction is nice. Having 8% movement speed at this level is huge in my opinion right so right now we're level 25 this is what our talent tree would look like you can put the full five points in conviction but i personally am going to run three points into conviction two points into pursuit of justice because like i said before the paladin's greatest weakness is no gap closer right so if you take pursuit of justice the eight percent and combine that with avenger's shield that's no longer as big of an issue as it was before. So I think this is going to be the build. Again, if you if Avenger Shield doesn't work and you're not having a problem sticking on top of people, feel free to put your five points in Conviction. But for me, this is what I'm going to run on launch day. This is how I'm going to build my Paladin because I'm going to be PvPing in Ashen Vale. I'm going to be doing Warsong Gulches. Uh, this would be my PvP spec. Um, and this is a PvP overview video, right? And I think Paladins are going to perform really, really well when it comes to open world PvP and Warsong Gulch. Uh, they've always been a lot of fun, right? Even back in regular vanilla. Think about vanilla, think about 2019 classic. Um, Paladins didn't have a lot of abilities, you know, didn't have a lot of buttons to press offensive abilities, really. They have a ton of utility. They can heal. You have your bubbles, you have Blessing of Freedom, you have Blessing of Protection, you have so many things. But they were lacking in the damage department, right? You kind of were relying on those big white crits, Seal of Command procs critting, um, to get, you know, nice burst damage out. They were very bursty when it did work and when you had the right weapon and the right gear. Um, but now you have some other things in your kit, right? You have Divine Storm, you have Crusader Strike. I think they are really going to be a force to be reckoned with in PvP. And I'd be curious to know what you guys think. So drop some comments down below. I'd love to get into some conversations about this. But yeah, I'm, I honestly think they're going to perform really well when it comes to PvP. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. And if you want to hang out with me live, I stream at twitch.tv slash hammerdance Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. There's going to be a link to that in the description below this video. And also, if you want to be part of the guild, join the community discord. We have a launch day event going on. We're going to be trying to be the first guild created on our server. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we have like groups going and we're going to be, it's going to be great. We're going to have the guild up and running within the first five to 10 minutes of the server. We're planning this entire thing out. So if that sounds like something you'd like to be a part of, or you just want to join the discord and hang out or be part of the guild, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Link to the discord in the description below this video. But anyways, guys, that's all I've got for you. So thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one.